And we have some breaking news from the NFL where the Chicago Bears linebacker Roquan Smith is heading to the Baltimore Ravens. That's been confirmed by our lead NFL insider Jonathan Jones. Now things between Smith and the Bears soured over the summer when they were unable to come to terms on a contract extension. Now Smith wound up requesting a trade in August before eventually reporting to camp. Now he's on his way to Baltimore reportedly in exchange for a second and fifth round picks for 2023. Now for the Bears it's their second trade in the past week after sending Robert Quinn to the Eagles on Wednesday. And here to talk about this breaking news, we do want to bring in our Pete Prisco. So, Pete, before we get into everything, just give us your initial reactions to this trade. Well, it's a smart move by the Bears. They didn't want to sign him to a long-term extension, so why not get some assets back for him? And you get a nice price back for him. I mean, th he's he's a little overrated, to be honest with you. I know people in this league think he's, you know, piles up a bunch of tackles, but I don't think he's as good as those numbers would portray them. So it makes sense. You don't want to pay this guy a long-term contract. So what you do is you get rid of them. And when you get rid of them, when you get up assets, and when you get assets, it makes your team better for the future. So I like the move for the Bears. Uh, you know, from a Ravens standpoint, it makes sense because they drafted Patrick Queen to be a linebacker they thought they could build around, and he hasn't worked out. Josh Bynes is banged up. They p played A.J. Klein, who they picked up off the scrap heap, the other day and so I think when you look at this team they needed to make a move and they got a young linebacker so we'll see. All right so Pete we mentioned it a little bit earlier it comes less than a week after they're sending Robert Quinn over to Philly. What does it tell you about the Bears uh, trading some of their best defensive players? Well, I think this Bears team is looking to the future. I mean, they have a first-time general manager, a young general manager. He's trying to build this team on his own, and it makes sense to try and get assets. And, uh, you know, the more draft picks you have, the better chance you have to build your roster and become a team that can build around Justin Fields. Right now, they're not ready to compete. Uh, they did win that game at New England, which gives some of the young players something to build upon. But if you look at that team, they're playing a lot of really young players. Not to say Roquan Smith is an older player. It's just that Roquan Smith is going to cost you a bunch of money. And when you try to build something, you don't want to put all that money in one player who, quite frankly, is a good player and not a great player. And he's going to want great player money. And Pete, how much better are the Ravens uh, with this move? Well, we'll see. I mean, they, again, they're a defensive team. That's who they are. They, you know, they want to build around their defense and Lamar Jackson, you know, in that offense a little bit. But they've, in their history, when they've gone to Super Bowls, they've been very good on defense. This is not a good defense right now. You get more athletic. He brings the ability to run the football, which they need. And in recent weeks, they have started to play better defense than the down guys, particularly. The, the rushers have been better. Uh, Clayus Campbell, before he got dinged up last week, has been better. So they're playing better football in front of that position. Uh, I think they make the move to look at it and say, hey, we have to get more athletic. We have to get a better tackler in there. And I think that's why they went and made the move. Again, I don't think he's as good as his numbers. He's a good, solid player. He's not a great player. And Pete, looking ahead, do you see the Ravens making any other trades moving forward? I think they'll sniff around the wide receiver market a little bit. Um, you know, now they traded Hollywood Brown, but you look back and they say, okay, Bateman's there, Duvernay's done some things, but why not maybe add another guy? I know they added Deshaun Jackson, but we'll see what he can do. Uh, I, if I were them, I would also look in the back end a little bit, maybe for a corner, if you need some corner help, if somebody becomes available. Um, but other than that, I think when you look at this Ravens team, they just have to play better in certain areas. They've had a lot of busted coverages in the secondary. Uh, they haven't thrown the ball as well, although Lamar Jackson was better the other day. Uh, but one thing they can do, they can run it, and when you can run it the way they run it, you can dictate tempo, and I think that helps them, particularly if you get better on defense. All right, and that is our Pete Prisco breaking down that breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ where the Bears have traded Roquan Smith to the Ravens. Quickly taking a look at the NFC North standings with the odds to win the division. The Bears are at plus 5,000. The favorites there are the Vikings at minus 1,100. They are 6-1 and one so far on the season. Welcome to the Monday edition of the Football.
Well, happy hour, Jeremy St. Louis. Happy to have you along. Brady Quinn and Danny Cannell are also here for this Monday edition. And the first segment was all set to be about possible trade destinations. And then we got an actual trade uh, flying in just before the hour with Rokon Smith uh, going from the Bears to the Ravens for a couple of picks in 2023. Our NFL insider Jonathan Jones uh, did confirm that deal. We knew things were not great between the Bears and Smith after a tumultuous summer. The two sides unable to come to a contract agreement. But uh, Danny, let me get your thoughts on this. How do you feel about Smith uh, going from Bears to the Ravens? I think this is a new trend, and I love it. Because as a player, you know, 20 years ago, you never saw these types of moves. Even 10 years ago, the NFL just wasn't very active around the trade deadline. And maybe you give Les Snead a lot of credit, the GM for the LA Rams, for kind of setting the example and having success with it with the Rams by going out and making key, key critical moves. But we've seen teams, we've seen two things. One, teams that their season is falling apart. They're willing to say, you know what, let's start looking for the future. Some guys that want to get paid, we'll go ahead and get some draft picks in return for that. But then more importantly, other teams that are in the thick of the playoff race and possibly Super Bowl contenders like the Ravens are saying, how can we fine tune our roster? What are we missing to put us over the top? And if you look at the Ravens example, their season, for example, I mean, they could be a one loss team had they not blown two leads, you know, halftime leads where they were leading and could have, you know, potentially, you know, won those games. And their weakness is on the defensive side of the ball. So they're going, let us go get a premier, you know, defensive end that can rush the passer, that can be that difference maker for us coming off the edge. So I love this new trend that we're seeing in the NFL. It's like trick or treat. Kind of like when you go up to one of those houses, you're not expecting much, maybe based on the house looks. And you get a king size candy bar out of it. That's how the Ravens should be feeling about this one. Look, they've struggled to stop the run this year. They're 22nd in the league, uh, at least in regards to stopping the rush. I think being about 14, something like that, in regards to yards per attempt. But Patrick Queen next to Roquan Smith, that's a nasty combination that's really needed at this point. If you look at the roster and who's made the most impact in regards to stopping the run this year, after Patrick was Queen, a linebacker, uh, you've got a bunch of secondary players. That's not good. That means. Basically, every running back is getting to the second level and you're forcing your safeties and cornerbacks to have to make tackles and make plays. So it's just very much needed for a team that's in the hunt to go try to win the AFC North division and go to the playoffs and win a Super Bowl. And for the Chicago Bears, you get some back in return to build for the future, which is really what that's about at this point. I mean, this roster needs an infusion of young, talented players who can help build you know, for the future at this point because th there's really not much of less left of the season. I think they gave their best shot to the Dallas Cowboys, at least offensively speaking, and, and they still couldn't come within 20 points. So it makes sense. Why not move on if you don't feel like you can get a long-term deal done? Uh, so I love it. I, mean, I, I feel like Roquan Smith should feel like he's holding a king-size candy bar right now <laughs> as he heads for the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, it goes from 3-5 and five team to a 5-3 and three team that's sitting atop their division. And, I mean, Brady, looking at the Ravens' schedule, I mean, it's not exactly a gauntlet over the next uh, six games. I mean, they've got some easy games coming up, so a really good opportunity for Roquan Smith to get acquainted with his new teammates and for this team to really get into a rhythm. A hundred percent. I mean, if you look at the division, you know, you're, you're looking at that Browns game week 15. They will have Deshaun Watson back. So you're assuming there's going to be a little bit better quarterback play than what we've seen from Jacoby Brissett. Yet the Browns still have defensive issues. The Steelers are look like they're heading for their first losing season under Mike Tomlin. I, I think their adjusted win loss total at this point, five and a half. That's it. So they don't look like much of a challenge. I mean, who knows if TJ Watt even comes back at any point this year. You know, the Bengals are the challenge. That's going to be the, the toughest team you're going to face within the division. Uh, maybe Jamar Chase is back at that point. We don't necessarily know, depending on you know how those two two teams are going to shake out. Uh, but the reality is, this is a, this schedule is set up for Baltimore to not want to say run away with the regular season, but really have a shot at winning the AFC North, being a high seed in the AFC as they head into the playoffs, which is really the moment that we're looking for Lamar Jackson and company to prove whether or not they can make a run at the Super Bowl. We know they can get to the playoffs. It's about what they do once they get there. Totally agree, uh, Brady. And I think, too, you look at what the Ravens have done historically when they've been great, and John Harbaugh has carried over this kind of mantra, is they want to play really good, aggressive, physical defense. And then now what they've built with Lamar Jackson on the offensive side of the ball is this run-based attack with Lamar Jackson running RPOs with a deep backfield. And, you know, that's where I'm kind of curious when we go to some of these trade rumors, are they done yet? Are they going to get him an offensive weapon? But to the defense, for it to be bolstered, 
in order for them not only to get to the division, but to potentially go on a Super Bowl run, which is their goal, they're going to have to shut down some pretty prolific offenses. And they already saw the Miami Dolphins come down uh, back from 28. So they saw the weakness of what could happen if they didn't address that side of the ball, which is a big reason why we're seeing Roquan added to the mix. Now they've got to get that side of the ball figured out against the schedule, which is weaker, try to position themselves to make this deeper run. And from a financial standpoint, it's going to be interesting because he's looking for an extension. Lamar Jackson is coming up, also <laughs> looking for a contract. So uh, interesting to see what the financial implications of this deal are moving forward for the Ravens as they look to challenge for the Super Bowl. All right. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.